Let's start learning about actions. Actions are a built-in feature of the QGIS software, which allow you to run arbitrary Python code when the user interacts with a layer. So if you think about, you know, as you are using QGIS, you want to click on a feature. You want to click on a polygon or a line or a point. And in response to that, you can configure QGIS actions to run some Python code. It could be a PyQGIS code. It could be a regular Python code. And this means now you can run some code when the user is interacting with a layer. And this opens up a whole range of possibilities of customization and building stuff in QGIS that help the user's workflow. Let's learn about the actions. QGIS actions are one of my favorite features. Whenever I am faced with the possibility of adding some functionality to QGIS using Python, this will be my go-to place to see if I can build an action because of the ease of implementation and the convenience of it. QGIS actions are a way to trigger Python code when you click on a feature. The actions are defined on a layer and there's a button in your QGIS toolbar which says actions. The user will go and pick the action that has already been defined. And when they use that button and then click on a feature, you can run some Python code. So if you think about any problem where you want to do something when the user clicks on a feature, they are a good fit for an action. So think about all the use cases where say when the user clicks on this point, something should happen. And that something could be anything that you can do using PyQGIS. And if you think about that, this are, if you think about many plugins, they are just a button where the user clicks a button, takes a button and does something. With it. So a lot of the plugins can be written as actions. And that's why somebody in my previous class referred to actions as baby plugins. So you can think of, you know, instead of embarking on a journey to build a real plugin, Think you can build a baby plugin using action. The actions are typically just a few lines of code. They don't require a lot of boilerplate. They don't require a lot of packaging and they can be used to customize your QGIS. So you already have a button. You can add this button to toolbar. Attribute table is already exist in your interface. So you just have to go and find that and execute any Python code or processing algorithms. And the best part of actions is you don't need to package it in a plugin and zip it up and upload to a plugin repository it's part of your QGIS project. So if you have a QGIS project, send the project to somebody, they get the actions. So they are very easily portable and easy to distribute. Let's see a preview of what you can do with actions. We're gonna go through some of these examples in the course and other ones is available in my other course where I have a full course on actions. You can go and find the code for that. Here's an example we're gonna learn how to do today. Let's say we have a layer of polygon layers. You can go and use the actions. You can see the there's a button with a gear icon that exists in your toolbar. Once you have defined an action that becomes active, you can choose the action to use and you can go and click on any polygon. That polygon is extracted as a new layer and added to your QGIS layers panel. Just four lines of code. So you click on a feature, it creates a new layer. This is a great example to learn about actions. Something else you can do, you can see this example where you select a feature, it's going to select, click on a feature, it's going to select all its neighbors. Here is an example where you click on a state, it's gonna select all the neighboring states. You can also do this and it's like the second degree neighbors. So simple bit of code, but you can now add this functionality and say, click on a polygon to select this neighbor polygon. We're gonna go through this example as well. This is another example I've used it in a real project where let's say you are reviewing some data and you want to update some attribute. In this case, we have an attribute in the attribute table called checked, it's n, and once you've checked it, I want to go and update it to Y. So instead of going to the attribute table, edit button, go and turn it to Y, you can just have an action saying mark, you are done, click on it, the attribute updates. You can see the actions can be triggered using the attribute table as well. So you can have a button in the attribute table, which the users can go and click, click, click. It'll just go and update those attributes. Another favorite example is you have a lot of imagery on your disk. Instead of loading everything at once, you can have an action where you can click on a polygon, it'll go and load the tile for that region. And that allows you to go say, load tile for this, load tile for this. Instead of loading gigabytes of data, you can just have a tile or a polygon layer and load data for that. We'll see the code for this as well. Another example from a use case where the user said, I'm working on a plugin that my users will say, I, I want to send a notification to all the people who live near a street where we're doing some maintenance work. So I'm 
want to find all the houses in my database that are within certain buffer zone and I want to send them an email. I want to build a plugin. And I wrote a code for them, 10 lines of code that does this using an action, right? You just select a road, selects the features within a buffer zone from another layer. And once you have the features, you can trigger any action using, including sending email or doing something else. So again, you can do things like this very easily using action. Here is an example of you're doing some data editing. You want to change the line direction. Instead of you editing the data, going and changing direction, build an action that just writes one line of PyQGIS code that reverses the line and you can trigger that. Here you have a feature, you want to compute some isochrones. You can use the ORS tools, which is a processing tool to compute this for you. So you install the plugin, you can also run some algorithms from a plugin using an action. So here I'm clicking on a poly feature, it's giving me the isochrone for that particular point that is computed using another plugin. Lastly, a very advanced use case. Here I'm clicking on a particular feature and this is a location of all the pharmacies. It's pulling a street view image from the internet and displaying that on your QGIS, all within an action. So I want to know street view image for this particular region. I can go and write some action, which will say, click on this, find the nearest panorama and display that. So we'll see the code for that as well. If all of this is exciting, we'll, you can now implement this very easily in QGIS using all the skills you have with PyQGIS. Actions are defined on a layer. So you will go and pick the layer where you want to trigger the action from. You can have multiple actions defined on each layer. And once the user is selected the layer, if there are actions defined, this action button that exists in your toolbar will become active and the user can pick and trigger that action. As I mentioned before, actions are saved inside of a QGIS project. Whoever has the project will have the action. You don't need to do anything special to send them the Python code. That Python code is saved within your QGIS project file. Before we dive into the code, one of the things that is typically confusing for people when they're writing action is when you create an action, it's going to ask, what is the scope of this action? There are different scopes that you can choose from. Most actions will have the scope of canvas. That means you have a map and you want to click on a feature from the canvas. This is what most actions I have written, most actions I've seen, they use. So this is what is the default as well. So if you just say, I want to trigger this action from the canvas, this is what you choose. And you'll know when the user clicks, what's the coordinate of the location, you have access to the layer and so on. You can also have a feature scope. That means when you trigger an action, it can only have access to the current feature that it, they clicked on. So this is, if you want to trigger something from an attribute table, this is what you'll use. There are other scopes such as field. If you right click a feature column in your attribute table, you can now trigger an action of, for the particular value. So that particular row in particular column, you have some value, you can right click and trigger some action. So you can define a field scope action as well. And there are other actions such as layer and form, not very widely used. Typically all the actions will be triggered from canvas and some of them from features. So these two are generally the defaults, but if you want to have an action that works by right clicking a uh, field in the attribute table or from an attribute form, you can use those scopes. Another thing, when we're writing actions, we're writing Python code. How do you refer to a field value in Python code? Typically when you're writing expressions, you'll say anything in double quote is a field value, but double quote in Python means something else. So that's why actions provide you with this different syntax where you will see any field name. So if you want to say, get the field name, field value of this field called name from this feature, you enclose this in square bracket percentage, percentage square bracket. And this whole value will be replaced by QGS with the value of the field before it calls the Python code. So let's say I'm going to trigger this action. I user clicked on this feature. User wants a name attribute. It's going to replace the whole thing with the value of the name and then create the Python code and run this. So whenever you see this kind of syntax, whatever is in between, you QGS will fetch the value, replace the whole thing with the value of it, and then run the action code. And this is used typically when you are referring to a variable or a field value within your features. With that, let's go and build some actions. 